Welcome to Donington Park for the final round of the 2014 BRSCC MX5 Super Cup. These monster Mazdas are going to bring it to a close on this very weekend. This is the Saturday race number one and in pole position is Liam Murphy and Abby Eaton keeps in company on the front row. Row two is Clint Bardwell and Tom Roche. Third row is Adam Brindle and Gary Townsend. Row four seems Simon Goddard and Matt Davies. James Aspinall and Justin Noonan on row five. The sixth row is Simon Fleet and John Davies. Row seven, George Lyon and Jeff Gurrier. Row eight is Robert Way and Jeremy Crook. Row nine, Stephen Andrew and Christopher Lord. On the tenth row is Jim Hart and Raymond Worley. And on the eleventh and final row, Nicola and Peter Gillat. Keeping each other company on the back and the lights are out and off they go and they pretty much pull away as one. And there we're looking back from Tom Roche's car at car number 223, Gary Townsend. He's looking to try and make a move on this opening section. And there we've got Abby Eaton trying to go for the lead. Apparently she only needs to get two fourths of this, these two races. She settles in second behind pole man Liam Murphy. She doesn't need to do anything untoward. Fourth is fine. She's 17 points in the lead. Uh, Tom Roche needs to do uh, a, a lot more than that, so he's going to be desperately hoping. He will have been disappointed to have started down in fourth position, but he's got himself up into third already as they come down the infamous Craner curves, and they're heading into Old Hairpin. As we see car number 91 there, Matt Davies just holding off uh, attention from pretty much a whole pack at the moment, as is so common in these uh, cracking MX-5 races. And uh, they head up into McLean's, I do love, oh we can hear a screech of tyres there, that's car number 8, so that's Nicola Gillat, uh, at the back. oh and Abby Eaton just uh, gives a little uh, love tap there to Tom Roche as we look back from Tom's car, uh, that means that she's uh, lost out that position to Tom then, so Tom's got himself up into second, I was about to say, but uh, not. she doesn't have to fight too hard, but Abby's a race, and look, she's desperately trying to get that second, all the while this is allowing Murph Liam Murphy to pull away at the front, Tom Roche has uh, taken some great speed at it. Oh, and uh, going straight on there, car number 91. Matt Davies started in eighth position. I uh, wonder whether they're having some slight issues with the handle in there. But uh, rejoins and gets back on at Wheatcroft Straight. So uh, it, no advantage was gained there, unfortunately. He lost a lot of places, so I don't expect him to uh, incur any kind of penalties there. 46, Simon Goddard there. Uh, just holding off the likes of Gary Townsend. As they head through Red Gate for the second time. Abby Eaton charging down through the Craner curves. She's in third. Tom Roche has managed to pull away. And we've got number 16 there. Is uh, looking to make a move. And uh, as Adam Brindle started in fifth. So he's gone a little bit further back on this, uh, I think. Uh, just trying to catch up because there's so many of them joined together. Car number 68, Justin Newman, just at the back of that pack. Um, but... Gary Townsend is looking to hold him off whilst also just seeing them all squirming as they came through. Uh, McLean's there heading towards Coppice and that's rapidly becoming a train of, oh, if we're not careful, that's going to be about eight cars. At the front, look at this, it's still Liam Murphy but he's now got the orange monster of uh, Tom Roche has now joined him. Tom Roche really wants to take this victory. And look at this, Abby Eaton's under pressure for that third position. Nothing untoward done there by Abby. She knows there's no point just throwing it all away. Clint Bardwell, car number 34, moves himself up onto that podium position. She has Abby Eaton still in fourth. She is still looking as they come across uh, along the Wheatcroft Strait, heading down towards Redgate, but she's not going to do anything daft. She doesn't want to throw this away. Remember, she only needs two fourth positions in today and tomorrow's races, and she can secure this championship. And in through Hollywood, down Craner Curves. It is still Liam Murphy in the lead, just holding off Tom Roche, the bright orange car of Tom Roche. Then a bit of a gap back, and it's number 34, Clint Bardwell. Good to see Clint back and racing. Uh, 44, Abby Eaton, still keeping the pressure on Clint Bardwell. I think the natural racer in her is uh, having the common sense to not do anything untoward. But she doesn't know how to take it easy. And Tom Roche takes the lead as they head up into McLean's. And that was a, a, a nice, smooth move there by Tom Roche. So he's got himself into that lead. Is he going to be able to pull away and uh, just leave Liam Murphy behind at all? He, this is exactly what Tom needs. Abby's not going to be delighted. She's still in the fourth that she needs. But I'm sure she wasn't wanting to see the orange car in the lead of Tom Roche. These two have been joined together virtually the whole of this season. 
So, Tom Roche heading in towards Roberts, bring it onto the uh, wheat cross straight to complete yet another lap. I think that's, I've lost track, is that four or five laps now? As per, <laughs> as is always the case with these races, they're so exciting. Oh, and Liam Murphy's diving up towards the inside as they head into Redgate. Has he got himself alongside? He has, he's made that move. I think uh, Tom Rose just saw that a little bit too late and he wasn't able to close that door. But has he got himself on the inside as they head towards Hollywood and then sweeping down the crane it goes. One of the greatest spectator points in the country as they come charging. Look at this, side by side, all the way down the crane of curves and they head down towards Old Hairpin and Tom Rose has got it back again wow Tom wants this Tom wants this championship and he knows what he's got to do he's got to get himself to the front and he's done that twice already but he's not able to shake off the attentions of Liam Murphy and we can't expect that to happen Liam Murphy had it in pole position in a rather wet qualifying but he had it there for a reason but they were so so close in qualifying uh, what did we have? The top 11 drivers separated by under a second in qualifying. So it's no wonder we're getting some outstanding racing as per usual. As they go through Coppers, head down the straight, heading towards Roberts. It's Tom Roche going very defensive now. He knows that Liam Murphy's going to make a move. Liam Murphy's got nothing to lose. So he uh, he's fourth in the championship. He's not going to be able to catch the front two by my maths. Just bounce over those curbs through Roberts onto the Wheatcroft straight. Come across to complete yet another lap. As we see them come across, Tom Roche, Liam Murphy, Clint Bardwell, Abby Eaton. I think just behind that is that Adam Brindle and uh, Simon Goddard, then Gary Townsend. Oh, and, and he's going for the outside line, so a very defensive Tom Roche. Now, is it is it Liam's turn to be able to do the switch back? Not quite. We saw that last time, but Tom Roche did a switch back up the inside as they head into Hollywoods and side by side through Craners last time. This time. Liam Murphy's just keeping himself tucked in behind. Not going to do anything stupid so that he, he ends up losing all that momentum. We've seen it time and time again. There's the momentum has a major part to play with these Pocket Rocket MX-5s. Remember, these are the, uh, the, the Mark III versions of the MX-5s. Oh, and Abby Eaton, is that a little bit of a lock-up there? As she was... Uh, is that a bit of smoke coming off of Abby's car there? And that, somehow that has enabled Clint Bardwell to close right up on the back of Liam Murphy. I'm in the background trying to see. Abby Eaton's still there. She's dropped away. Was that smoke from Abby Eaton's car? I'm not sure. But Clint Bardwell has now closed back on this uh, duel between Tom Roche and Liam Murphy. So uh, Liam Murphy is not only going to be looking forwards at the orange car of Tom Roche trying to take that uh, lead back again. But he's got to be aware of Clint Bardwell just behind him. They head into Roberts onto the start-finish straight. The Wheatcroft straight again. It is still Tom Roche from Liam Murphy, from Clint Bardwell. Abby Eaton's still going, but she's dropped right back now at the moment. I don't know whether we're going to be able to hear anything as she comes past, if there's any kind of issues. But it certainly looked, I, I thought initially, that there was a bit of a lock-up. We'll have to keep an eye on that. She is in that fourth position, but my goodness, she does not want to lose more than that. Uh, but the cars behind her do seem to be closing. And that's one heck of a gaggle of MX-5s just behind her there. Coming down Craners into Old Hairpin. Quite a tight right-hander as they come charging down the hill there. And then the left-hand kink of Starkey's Bridge. Another left-hand kink of Schwantz Curve. Up the hill again we go to the right-hander of McLean's. On the brakes as you see there. Very defensive line by Tom Roche. He knows that uh, Liam Murphy will be more than happy to... Uh, dive up the inside and in fact he's trying it now as they head into coppice that was a great movie he absolutely gave tom no chance to be able to respond look at that the double apex of coppice and in fact tom roche has now switched himself back this is some great racecraft by both of these two we talk about great racecraft clint bardwell's seen a little shimmer of light there and he's got himself past roche is he going to be able to get past liam as well but tom roche has got the inside there so i'm not sure no i didn't think clint bardwell would quite be able to pull that it's quite tight through Roberts there, but wow, what some outstanding racecraft. Back into the lead goes our pole position. In the background, there's Abby Eaton. She's got a hand up. She's into the pits. Oh, no, this is not what Abby needed. This is going to make it very upsetting for her and very tight for tomorrow's race. Tom Roche probably won't know yet that she's out, but he's going to be delighted. Not that anybody ever wants someone to retire, but this is exactly what he needed for his championship hopes. And uh, he is... Drop down into second, so if when, as soon as he finds out, I think he's going to be desperately trying to get himself back into that first position. 
So Simon Goddard is just ahead of... Uh, is that yet? Just make sure. Yes, it is. It's car number 16, which is Adam Brindle, just holding off Gary Townsend, who in turn is uh, under close uh, scrutiny by car number two, James Aspinall. There, great to see James back as well. As they head up Schwantz and into McLean's, just behind there is car number 93. That's John Davies. He did seem to lose Matt Davies in the grey 91 car earlier. Uh, namesake but uh, sure if there's a, a long term issue there but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that and side by side Tom Roche for the lead again remember he probably isn't aware yet that Abby Eaton's out but he will be next time round I'm sure they're desperately putting something on the pit board to let him know look at it these two are absolutely glued together as they come across the start finish line again we're probably oh and we've got a recovery truck there so there's not going to be able to make any move. Oh, and we've got an incident coming on the exit of Roberts onto the start finish straight. Gary Townsend. That was car number eight there that's off that had the yellows and the recovery tracks. That's Nicola Gilat. Um, unfortunately, we saw Nicola lose it just going on the first lap up into McLean's. That one seems a bit more uh, permanent there, dragging it out of the kitty litter, unfortunately. So Tom Roche had to back himself off. We saw Gary Townsend have a bit of a moment there as well, coming onto the start finish straight. Uh, there was another car, but it all happened so quickly. I didn't quite catch who that was. But remember, that was the gaggle that was... Uh, hence, you'll see now, behind third place, Clint Bardwell, is a huge gap because that's completely ripped that, uh, that battle apart. They head through McLean's at the front. Still Liam Murphy, but the uh, probably enlightened Tom Roche... But enlightened by the news that Abby Eaton isn't there, the second apex, he's doing this again. He does like to do that switch um, in, in coppice as he uh, gets himself positioned through the first one, carries much speed through, and then on the second apex tries to get himself up the inside. But he hasn't managed to do it this time, heading down towards the uh, right-left chicane of Roberts. Onto Wheatcroft straight. Look at the speed that Tom Roche carries through there onto the start-finish straight. It's going to be Liam that's going to have to stay... Uh, defensive this time I think I don't know if you noticed in the background the joys of the MX-5 Super Cup is that further back there was an absolute gaggle of what I would guess has got to be at least 10 cars absolutely outstanding but understandably we are focusing on this lead battle Liam Murphy our pole position man he still has the lead from Tom Roche he started in fourth so he's got himself up into second position Abby Eaton's out of the race Clint Bardwell just seems to have dropped away from these two at the moment um, not, it doesn't look as though there's any kind of issue but uh, I think these two have just got themselves so slipstream together they've managed to punch a hole through the air and just pull away but uh, we saw Clint Bardwell suddenly close in out of nowhere earlier, which again we've seen time and time this year. And look at this, Tom Roche again is trying up the inside as they head in towards uh, what it seems to be oh, a little, uh, little love tap there. This coppice, he does love coppice. And uh, he has look on that, the second apex, he's got himself up the inside again as they head along the straight, but no, Liam Murphy has carried that pace through. In fact, I think Tom gave him a bit more pace with that little uh, tap up the back there, so <laughs> it, he, uh, it didn't work out for him at all. On the brakes for Roberts they come, onto the start, finish straight again. And uh, we saw, oh, and I was just about to say, sorry Tom, yeah, he, he shook his head there, he wasn't happy about that. I was just about to say, he carries so much pace through Roberts onto the start finish straight that he closed him, but he just got himself a bit twitchy there. You saw him shake his head or nod his head in frustration. He knew that he got himself a bit too squirrely there to carry the speed. Liam Murphy didn't even have to go defensive that time, which is a double whammy because that means he's carried that speed all the way into Redgate, down Hollywood, Craner Curves, as they get on the brakes for the right-hander of Old Hairpin. Still Liam Murphy now managed to pull himself away. That's why Tom will be so frustrated. Oh, look at this. A little bit further back, we've got car number 21. Simon Fleet is uh, being put under pressure. 71 and 77. So Jeff Gurrier and Jeremy Crook. As I said, just battles all the way through this field. And uh, it's good to see that so many of these drivers back out for this last race meet of the, of the year for the MX-5 Super Cup. There's been some great fields in this. As we see car number five there, that's Robert Way. 
just holding off the attention of, is that Raymond Worley, car number 40? Yes, it is. So Raymond Worley's trying to get uh, back onto terms with uh, Robert Way, who we'd already seen that they're trying to chase down Jeremy Crook and Jeff Gurrier. We'll see so often that there's every chance this will become a four-car train any minute. But, <laughs> sorry, commentator's curse, Jeff Gurrier's managed to pull away from uh, uh, Jeremy Crook as they head through Coppice off the start finish straight. That looks like, uh, I did mention earlier that uh, Matt Davies, car number 91, we saw him go straight on, uh, straight line Roberts earlier, but he's got himself ahead of uh, John Davies there, so uh, get himself back up through the grid. I'm not sure what position that's going to be. That might even be for fourth position now, actually. And we've got car number 10 there, Christopher Lord. Christopher Lord started in 18th position, and he's now battling with Matt Davies, who started in 8th. Now, I have to have a check in a little while exactly where they are, but uh, remember, we've lost Abby Eaton. We certainly seem to see go off the side of the track, Gary Townsend. I don't know whether uh, he rejoined and is ahead of them. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Jeremy Crook now holding off. Robert Way is closed right in as they head up. Schwantz up towards McLean's. Through McLean's they go. Tearing ever so slightly downhill, to, downhill then uphill towards... Uh, Coppice, we're back with our leaders and look at this, they've just been split apart, totally, we saw that frustration on uh, uh, Tom Roche's his helmet action, I suppose is the only thing I can say probably shouldn't, but um, he's, as he came on to the start finish straight, he just got it crossed up and he's not been able to close up on that I said that it was a double whammy, that not only did he lose a bit of time there but it meant that Liam didn't even need to go defensive as he headed into the first corner at Redgate. And it has just enabled Liam Murphy to edge away ever so nicely. There's probably only two or three laps, I'm, I'm suspecting, uh, remaining something long. We're back here with, uh, who have we got here? We've got number 66, uh, sorry, 16, uh, which is uh, James Aspinall. And he's just got the move being made there by, I think that was George Lyons. Is that car number 55? I think it is, you know, it is. Well, George Lyon started in 13th, so he's moving himself up there. Um, back to our leader on the brakes, heading up. Uh, Schwantz curve into McLean's, the right-hander of McLean's. The, the orange car of Tom Roche. I would imagine he, he's going to do his best to close up, but he knows not to do anything daft. He's still second position, and he... And, I'm sure he must know that Abby Eaton's out of the race now, so he's got to maximise those points. Now, yes, of course, he gets more in first, but the last thing he wants to do is to come to any kind of grief, making a, a rash move for that lead. Liam Murphy's just got himself totally into the zone. Look at that, absolutely effortless, through Roberts, onto the start, finish straight. That was almost metronomic through there then. Last lap, so the last lap board is now out as uh, it is Liam Murphy from Tom Roche from Clint Bardwell in the background there they've spread themselves out this is very un MX5 Super Cup like to be honest with you they're that <laughs> that far uh, apart but uh, it doesn't mean it hasn't been an exciting race by any stretch of the imagination down they come through Craner Curse for the final time Liam Murphy nice and comfortable in that lead now he knows he doesn't have to do anything daft Tom Roche can take it easy he knows that he's too far away on this final lap to, to make any kind of move and he's not under any pressure from Clint Bardwell who's got that third position up they go through Schwantz into the right hander of McLean's onto the brakes nice and smooth in the middle of the track touches that apex lets it run out wide down the hill then back up the slope into Coppice Remember, this was Tom Roche's favourite corner, is my reading of it, to be honest with you, with it, it hitting those uh, double apexes. Onto the, the straight, down towards Roberts for the final time they come. This will be 15 laps that will have been completed. It is Liam Murphy is going to nice and smoothly into Roberts. I was desperately stopping myself then. I was going to say about to take the victory. I don't want the commentator's curse. Through he comes. And he takes that jacket flag, a great flag to Light's victory. 
Uh, light to flags, even victory, sorry. Oh, and look at this in the background for the third position. Clint Bardwell is trying to desperately hold on to that. And Simon Goddard n took to the grass, nearly took it, but didn't quite. A great victory for Liam Murphy. Second, Tom Roche. Clint Bardwell, third. Fourth was Simon Goddard. Fifth was Justin Newman. Adam Brindle. Matt Davies in seventh. George Lyon in eighth. Christopher Lord. John Davies. James Aspinall. Simon Fleet. Stephen Andrew. Jeff Gurrier in 14th, 15th was Jeremy Crook, 16th Jim Hart, 17th Raymond Worley, 18th Peter Gillat. Excluded was car number 5, Robert Way, for uh, overtaking under the yellow flags, unfortunately, in Redgate. But we're going to go to Joe Tanner in the pits. I'm here with Abby Eaton, the number 44 machine from the Mazda Super Cup points leader at the moment. However, yesterday the championship was looking a little bit more healthy. You had 17 points roughly, but a DNF in race 1. Yeah, uh, yesterday went sort of the worst possible uh, outcome it could be, really. Um, we didn't finish. There was a problem with um, the engine, and basically the engine blew. So I had to pull off, which is a horrible thing to have to do. Um, but yes, I am still leading. Um, it's now, I think, a nine-point gap. Um, so in terms of, of the drive I've got to do today, it's got to be the drive of my career, really, to, um, to seal it. Not a total disaster. I'm still leading by nine points, but I think the biggest issue today is that you're off the back of the grid. Yeah, so because of the DNF yesterday, I'm going to start from the back of the grid, which is 22nd, I think. Um, and in terms of winning it, to definitely secure myself um, the championship, I need to finish fourth. Um, so I do like driving from the back. I like you know, myself to have a challenge to be able to pull through, and I can only go forward. Uh, so yeah. Can you expect the rest of the guys um, to be a little bit more gentle than they normally would do if it was just an average race when you're coming through? Do you think anyone's going to put much of a fight up? Uh, it's up to them whether they do or not. Um, but I think, yeah. It, it, they'll be um, brave. Have you been around and spoke to them all? <laughs> no, I was thinking I need to go around with a tenner to all of them, don't I? Chocolate. Yeah, um, I think they'll be uh, a little daft to put up a fight to um, block me from getting by, but I'm, I'm going to try and get through as quick as I can and pick them all off, mainly on the first lap. I uh, hope to do that. I really felt for you yesterday when I watched the race and I came over to speak to you and I saw you didn't throw the same size drop I would have thrown. You were reasonably calm about it, but massive disappointment. And you were in that safe position. You didn't need to win. You were kind of settled. You were just counting the laps down and it's just a, a horrible situation. Yeah, I mean, the, the car wasn't right anyway from qualifying. So we were just sort of um, trying to find our feet with set, setting up the car. Um, so the first couple of laps, just getting into it and then I dropped into fourth position. I was like, right, I'll just hold this for now. And actually, I was pulling Clint in and I was thinking, well, if I can drop into third, it doesn't matter whether Tom wins or not. You know, I've still got those points in the bag that I need and it'll take the pressure off today. Whereas it's done the opposite now and I've got a little bit of pressure today. But actually, Tom still has the pressure as well because he needs to either finish second with the fastest lap or um, win completely um, to win the championship. So it's, it's not just down to me. The guys have been obviously working hard. Is that a complete new engine? Uh, yeah, so we've got the, um, we basically went to a, a scrapyard um, yesterday. Oh, well, I saw this arrive yesterday actually on the back of a trailer. This is the car we've got. We took the engine out of that um, and put it into to the race engine. So the boys have been working all night, you know, doing a stellar job. Just putting all the finishing touches back onto it now and pipes and electric things and stuff like that. So we, we're going to start it up soon and hope that hopefully it runs and, and do a few runs up and down there. Yeah, you haven't got a chance to do any warm-up, any practice, anything before the race. It's just straight out to the green flag lab. Yep, so straight out. No uh, am I helping? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, what will be will be, and if it's mine to win, then I'll win it. Good luck. Give us an exciting race to watch. Yeah, I'll try my best.